Okay. Mm-hmm. Nostalgia Critic? Who? Nostalgia Critic, is this your car out here? Just a sec. Could you open the door, please? Yeah, yeah, just a sec. Just a sec. God damn it, Critic, you have to review Jack and Jill! I don't wanna! You have to! I don't wanna! Seriously, Critic, get a hold of yourself! Think about it. It's just Adam Sandler. <laughs> Let's take a look at the first film in history to win a Razzie Award in every category, Jack and Jill. This is a film so infamously despised that even the trailer got people deeming it the worst movie ever. Hell, the mere idea got people saying it's the worst movie ever. Adam Sandler has a twin sister who, what a shock, is loud, loves farts, and has no distinct character outside of an unfunny voice. You got an hour and a half of that, baby. The common comparison is that it looks like one of the fake movies made up in Adam Sandler's dramatic comedy, Funny People mocking the cheap humor of his films. But this isn't satire, this is real life, where dreams go to die. It appears on a ton of worst films ever list, it's said to be Sandler's worst even by Adam Sandler movie standards, and for some reason, we gotta take a look at it. Let's not waste any time as we have a whole film that's gonna do that. This is Jack and Jill. It opens with a collection of twins talking about what it's like to be twins on the set of a milk commercial. Ben and twin is like been a, a married couple. And you can't divorce her. I just knew going in I'd be comparing this to when Harry met Sally. We just make these sounds, it's like, ah, ah. Despite it being kind of grating, why do I feel like this annoyance is still gonna be the best part of the movie? <laughs> Up, cut to a baby farting. So far my assumption's correct. Give them credit that even from the start, they don't try to make the sister look like a girl, they just dress up a pair of twin boys. Granted, Sandler's amazing ability to create fleshed out characters through strangling cat noises doesn't go unappreciated. <laughs> Ugh, can we cut to a voice slightly less annoying? Hold it, cut, Jack, are you watching this? Oh, I did say just slightly. It looks like Sandler is on the set of a commercial, or an unused Dana Carvey show sketch, as he plays Jack, an ad executive who- Oh my god, an ad executive, really? Really? Okay, look, I, I know that doesn't sound like a big deal, but here's the thing. Sandler's films are infamously known for their product placements. They're always trying to sneak in advertisements. Well, not sneak as much as violently bludgeon you with. Man, it's you who is good. Snack pack. Popeye's chicken. You might want some Cinnabon. Reese's peanut butter cup and some Gatorade. So now, they literally just make him an ad executive. Just cut through the shit. He's going to be surrounded by ads. And after the opening credits, how many plugs do we have? We may lose Dunkin' Donuts. Well, never say never. Holy Remember, you didn't crap! No, you know what? I better not say that. That might sound like an ad for Pepto. It could only get worse by making it the focus of the story, play it. They want Al Pacino to do a commercial. They got this new coffee drink, the Dunkachino. Dunkachino, Al Pacino, they sound alike. Oh yeah, that's his mission throughout the entire film, trying to get Al Pacino to advertise the Dunkachino. Remember, you didn't think we'd get Brad Pitt to do that Radio Shack commercial. Oh my God, stop, stop! Christ, I could go for a Diet Coke right now. Oh my God, it's working on me and I didn't even know it. We're up to four product placements in the first four minutes. That's a product placement per minute. For the love of insert your ad here, just tell a story. Where were you? I've been waiting forever for you. Go back to the product placements. Go back to the product placements. So believe it or not, that's Sandler as the twin sister who flew in for Thanksgiving on American Airlines. Are you sure? Adam Sandler himself isn't a product by this point. Now, Jill is different from Sandler's wide range of characters who are loud, high-pitched, and have a lisp, because this one also has boobs. Oh wait, he's done that before. There is no difference between this and his other characters. Oh, and she also has a talking bird, which I guess could be funny, but it literally just says one catchphrase. Where were you? Where were you? Where were you? Even if you were gonna do that, couldn't it be something funny at least it says over and over? Like, learn how to say subway, you dumb bird! I'm gonna lose my job if I don't teach you this product placement, dumb bird! Not that the other two loud parakeets that are never funny are much better. Oh, those are both Adam Sandler. Sorry, they blend. 
So we cut to Sandler's Thanksgiving, which comprises of a homeless man, a girl in a pilgrim costume, a boy who tapes things to himself, and Katie Holmes. Why is Katie Holmes the strangest thing in that lineup? And it looks like they all sit down to eat dinner. Ooh, the house looks like... amazing! You got a new chandelier? Yeah, yeah. I love the old one! You ever wonder what would happen if Linda from Bob's Burgers took on the identity of any of the Monty Python actors in drag? You haven't. You shouldn't, but you are now. Thanks, movie! I'm allowed out here once a year, so I tend to miss things. Sophie just got her green belt in karate. I didn't even know she did karate. What? It feels like I'm in the Twilight Zone right now. Trust me, Christ, you're not alone. I'm like Jimmy Stewart at the end of that movie, the one with, with they, they, they're in Pottersville. What? Okay, we all know what this joke's gonna be. They're gonna say A Wonderful Life and she's not gonna believe him. Next. It's A Wonderful Life? No, no, with Jimmy Stewart. The, Next. The one where he meets the angel. It's A Wonderful Life. Why do you keep saying that? Next. No, the one where he falls in the pool. By God, we're not at little Nikki levels yet, but sweet Jesus, we're tight roping there. Ook maga do do pagogo. I can't stand you being here! It's like a white Medea Thanksgiving, except there's two Medeas. Stop running that down, Tyler Perry! And now a great impression of everyone who saw this film. This is really awkward. I'm gonna go. A little too calm and collected, though. Jill gets upset and runs outside, leading to, oh joy, more screaming. I'm sleeping out here in the woods! At least the animals will be nice! <laughs> 15 minutes in and already I'm praying for nuclear annihilation. I knew you didn't love me, God. It looks like the family has a gardener named Felipe. He's about as funny as everything else. When immigration shows up, I do a great impression of a tree. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, strong. All right. Jay Leno better watch his back. A legit comparison. Jill says she wants to stay longer at the house, and Jack begrudgingly agrees. Yeah, this was supposed to be an American Girl doll plug, but they remember they like having customers. As if things weren't incestuously creepy enough. That is actually what you wake up to in hell. Or at least it probably should be. Stop writing that down, Satan! No! They go on The Price is Right because somebody has blackmail photos of somebody, and Jill gets to spin the wheel. Good luck, Jill. <laughs> I don't even know how that was supposed to knock her out. Didn't look like there was anything on the wheel to knock her out, but you know it is quiet for a few seconds. I'll count my blessings. They partake in a trailer shot with six reminders to drink Coke. Oh, trust me, I'll be seeing lots of Coke after this film is over. As Jill's cell phone goes off. Okay, and you turn, turn the heat turn off? All the way off the- Jill! If Jill! I got... Please stop talking. Well, now you're just confusing the audience. No Adam Sandler viewer would interpret this as rude to make Jill feel better after apparently Jack was acting out of line, according to his idiot idiots. Maybe she's lonely and she needs someone to get her through the holidays. He sets her up for online dating and lies on her profile to get a lot more dates. Dad, I don't know what I'm gonna wear! Oh, I'll help you, I'll help you. What you gonna wear? What are you gonna wear, Daddy? In hell. I'll give the film a smirk point on that one. The date is, of course, cameo number 50, who is shocked to find who he's going out with. I live in the Bronx, and I don't have any children. You know, Sandler, I'm aware we both got our kind of anti-humor thing going on, but wow, are you anti-humor. Hello? He ends up hanging on the light in a bathroom for dozens of minutes to escape, because just going out the door made too much sense. As Jill reveals how bad her date went. Oh, you can stop it already! Why do you put so much pressure on? Well, I'll give the film this. It's great insect repellent. Oh my god, I'm an idiot. Why are you an idiot? I mean, we know why. We just really want to hear you say it. Jack feels bad about setting her up, so he takes her to a basketball game that, it just so happens, Al Pacino is at. What's going on with the beard? I don't want people to know I'm in an Adam Sandler movie. Honestly, if we're going by current movie roles, Depp should be the one in the beard. Jack tries talking to Al Pacino and... Of course? Pacino falls in love with Jill. Compliments of Mr. Pacino. What the? It's a dead horse's head! And hey, if you think Depp's cameo doesn't age well, check this one out. Just, just Jared's fine. I miss the old Jared. If he was around, he'd be with me and not with the two hookers. Which, by the way, aren't they a little older than what you're used to? Check out this strangeness when it's revealed that somebody there is an atheist. This guy doesn't believe in God? No! Uh, no, no I, I, I'm just- Idiots like you oh. really make me mad! Fight! Fight him! Fight! 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 You hear those bodies falling? That's just another piece of comedy dying. 
But Al Pacino finds out about their get-together and follows Jill. Don't be startled, it's only me. <laughs> you alone? Not so scary. You in the Jack and Jill movie? Terrifying. Pacino takes Jill to his home, and I know this is gonna sound insane, but Al Pacino's love for her is awkwardly hilarious. He's like, weirdly into it. It is time for my salvation. I found the one woman with all her rough you and charm who will lead me back to sanity. Even when he has her do something as stupid as play ball in his office, leading to what? Something breaking! He's still pretty damn funny through it. I'm sure you have others, though. Ah, uh, you'd think it, but uh, oddly enough, I don't. And movies like this is why. But hell with that, we have Felipe's birthday party to go to. Can't overlook that. Look, these are my kids. Jose, Jose Junior, and Josefina. They all look like my wife, thank God. Awesome. Is there a Chinese festival going on, too? Maybe we can break out the breakfast at Tiffany's makeup for Rob Schneider. Never had Mexican food. <laughs> Never show that woman again, for the love of God. You're gonna show her a lot, aren't you? Angelina. <laughs> you know, why don't you just show the robbers a joy, constantly stealing all happiness from you? When your self-love returns, they will purge it with this film. Oh no, she got knocked out. Better feed her jalapenos because, you know, Mexicans! You know, that joke was so funny and such good commentary. Let's do it twice! <laughs> yes! Peppers are Mexicans' life juice. It's funny because the people that wrote this joke are going to hell. Meanwhile, Pacino breaks into Jack's house to find Jill and comes across her sweat stains on the bed. <sighs> Al Pacino said yes to this. But then again, this is old Al Pacino. Young Al Pacino probably would have done this to the movie. <laughs> so Pacino tells him that if Jack gets him Jill, he'll do the Dunkin' Donuts commercial. I mean, come on, how can he not go for a person like this? Uh, I spent the day at Felipe's picnic where I finally felt welcome. <laughs> by everybody. I think this is how every Sandler script is written. Line, fart, line, fart. Line. I spent the day at Felipe's picnic. Fart. Line. By everybody. Fart. It's an elegant dance of shit. Pacino takes a call literally in the middle of a play. Again, surprisingly kind of funny. If Jack can't seem to convince Jill to go on a date with Pacino, so of course he dresses up like her on a cruise to meet up with him. The bathroom attendant even straightens him out, so to speak. Aw, I guess. Pacino flies a helicopter overhead and picks him up. In keeping with Pacino being the only semi-entertaining thing in this, we get our first legit laugh-out-loud joke. I used to raise pigeons. Really? Yeah. No, I'm sorry, that was Brando. Oh! <laughs> Shit, that was a really good joke, too! We had such a good record going! Don't worry, though, it gets more awkward. You ticklish? No. <laughs> so empty. Why does this make me feel so empty? <laughs> sure enough, Jill calls and finds out that he's pretending to be her, breaking her poor little heart. Because I am so ready to have an emotional scene with this character. I think I'd cry more over this guy. But okay, here's a classic setup. We know exactly where this is gonna go, but they can't possibly screw it up, right? It's done wrong! We know exactly what he's gonna do and that she's obviously gonna hit him, so you gotta deliver it a little differently. Like here, here's a different edit of the same scene. That works better because it allows us to put the pieces together. It doesn't have to be spelled out. It respects our intelligence. And I know it's ironically stupid thinking Jack and Jill would respect our intelligence, but I'm sorry, I have to have some hope for something!
Jack realizes he betrayed his sister, though, and he gets back on the cruise ship. You were Del Pacino, weren't you? You're good. Jill was right. You are a weirdo. And I married Tom Cruise! Speaking of weirdos, David Spade is in this movie, too. Let's see if they use him to his full potential. Yeah, sounds about right. Where are you even hiding, hon? I was visiting my brother. God, you're hot. <laughs> mm. But Jack appears to tell Jill just how much she means to him in their secret language. You know, it's only a matter of time before Sandler films got so bad at being sentimental that even his gibberish is trying to sound emotional. But Lady Spade insults Jack's wife, so Jill insults Lady Spade, and Lady Spade tackles Jack's wife. And Al Pacino comes in as Don Quixote. Repeto do battle. All of this feels justified. Oh my god, is that Colonel Sanders? No, that was earlier. Your purity befits a knight more worthy than I. Go to him, he waits for you. You know, Pacino, I was actually enjoying your weird, but then you went and made it weird. It's a foul monster! Oh. Let's just go, you don't care how the scene ends, ah! do you? I do not. They go to see Felipe, who apparently shoveled all the fake snow off his house. Seriously, it looks like shaving cream popcorn. And Felipe confesses his love to Jill. Because that was a thing, apparently. A happy ending, or so they tell us. But hey, I don't think we plug Dunkin' Donuts enough. What's my name? Dunkin' Gino. It's a whole new game. Dunkin' Gino. Say hello to my chocolate blend. So this is a mental breakdown. It's not as scary as I thought. Pacino is supposed to give his thoughts on the commercial at the end, but you know what? Let's just show what he's really talking about. Burn this. I'm sorry? All sorry. copies. Destroy them. I couldn't agree more. Jack and Jill is Jack shit and Jill... shit. The only thing it has going for it is, oddly enough, Al Pacino's weird-ass performance. I hate to say it, but his dedication steals the show and can be funny once in a while. Aside from that, though, it's pretty much as annoying, grating, and painfully obnoxious as you would expect. If you can't figure out this is gonna be a stinking pile, then maybe you deserve the awful film you got coming to you. For me, if it looks like a dump and smells like a dump, it must be Jack and Jill. I'm the Nostalgia Critic, I remember- So, where do you want us to put these? Release it after you bury every copy of this movie ever made. But we- can't do that. Oh, we'll oh, find a way. Oh, we'll find a way. <laughs> no worries, we can yeah, totally we'll get that done way. for you. Yeah. Okay. See you later, we'll find it. We'll find it. Okay. Every copy.